All righty. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Today, as Ashley uh, has mentioned, we are going over um, temperature aware um, SI, SI simulations in SI Wave. So let's jump right in. Uh, we're going to start out with a little, a few slides, and then I'm going to want to do, I'm going to show most of the simulation workflow to you in the software itself. Alrighty, here is our overview for today. Um, we can look at this chart and think of the uh, rectangles as simulations that we're going to perform and the arrows as information that will be taken into account from pre previous simulations. So um, first thing that we will do is uh, import our geometry. Then we'll just do a uniform temperature SYZ simulation. An SYZ simulation is one that extracts the S, Y, and Z parameters of uh, a board, um, after which we'll perform a DCIR sim uh, to find currents and heat generated on the board, or power dissipated on the board, rather. Uh, DCIR takes into account your uh, PCB's geometry to find currents on the board. And then uh, we'll also be doing ice pack simulations, taking into account this previous information from the DCIR sim. Ice pack is a CFD and uh, thermal solver, which will take our dissipated powers from the electrical, the DC electrical solve, and uh, find how they distribute themselves find how temperature distributes itself along the board, uh, given those conditions and other uh, uh, environmental conditions. Um, and finally, what's new today is we'll take these ice pack generated temperature distributions and we'll take them into account in our SYZ simulations and perform a simple uh, SI uh, simulation using that information. Namely, uh, our result will be I diagrams, which change as a result of these different temperature distributions. So um, that's pretty much everything I want to show you in the PowerPoint. Um, so I'm going to jump right into our simulation. So here is our SI Wave software right here. Um, as you can see, we have this PCB modeling area, and we have various panes for controlling the inputs to the software and investigating the results. Um, the very first thing that we would do if we were starting from a, a green pasture, would be to import our geometry. SI Wave can import many types of geometry from ECAD, uh, such as Altium or uh, KiCad or Eagle. So it, it accepts um, formats such as ODB++, Gerber's, and uh, ANSYS' own custom format for taking into account uh, stack up geometry and material properties, which is the .edb. Um, many uh, large ECAD programs will support a plugin that will just export this .edb file, which will uh, give you your best geometry import experience. OK, so we have that here. If, if you were to do that, if you were to uh, be adding your geometry, what you would first do is import uh, your stack up and your component file here, but I've already done done so. And uh, all of the simulations that we're going to set up and perform today are actually already performed here, so we don't have to wait for these simulations to complete. So um, what we're going to do is kind of kind of represents like a logical um, design approach that you might take to handling heat on a board. So the first thing that we're going to show you is um, how uh, this S parameter extraction SI simulation would look if we're just assuming that all the temperatures are uniform throughout the entire board at room temperature, namely 20 degrees Celsius. So I'm a designer, let's say, and I just want to see um, how this is going to perform as is without taking these things into account just to get a baseline, right? So the way we do that is first set up our ports. Um, throughout the, the simulation for the SYZ extractions, I'm just going to consider one net here, this clock line. Uh, so I've placed one port at the connector side and another 
at this integrated circuit here. So um, the S21, or the amount of energy that goes between uh, the second port, that goes to the second port when excited, when the first port is excited, will show us, uh, which it will show us a uh, necessary um, parameter of the uh, channel here, namely how, how well uh, a digital signal will pass through this line. So um, to set up that, after I place the ports, you can place ports in a couple of ways in SI Wave. You can do that by generating selected ports on nets. That's pretty much the easiest way here, and that's how I set this up. So what you do is you would have this net selected, and you would hit this button, Generate Port on Selected Nets, in the Tools rip, uh, tab of the ribbon. And then you'll be able to generate, choose on which components you'd like to generate your uh, uh, ports. So for me, when I did this, I just have this clock line, um, and then I would just deselect all of these other uh, integrated circuits here because I'm not interested in uh, placing ports at those pins. So I just select all these and then deselect them so they have this red X instead of the green check mark. And then I would just hit generate, and we would see these, these two ports appear. The next step would be to set up the SYZ simulation. So that's as simple as just going to compute SYZ parameters here in the simulation software, or in the uh, simulation tab of the ribbon. Uh, you'd enter your simulation name. So the first one I would do would be the uh, uniform temp 20 degrees. And um, I'm going to accept the defaults for now. Um, you can um, change, of course, your frequency sweep and various other parameters that allow you to trade off between um, accuracy and simulation time. But the one most pertinent to our presentation today is temperature. So you get to that from going to other solver options and then the temperature tab. And so the first thing I would do as a designer is just see how this looks with the uniform 20 degrees Celsius temperature. So I'll hit okay. And then I would launch this simulation software or the, the simulation, and uh, the it would take a little bit of time, and then we would eventually get this uh, SYZ simulation. So again, ahead of time, what I've done is I've exported an S parameter file uh, corresponding to this board and having the extracted S parameters from the simulation we just run, and I've placed it in this um, ADT simulation uh, by using the SI wizard. Um, so the way you can use the SI wizard, what this will do is um, allow you to place IBIS models connected to either end of your channel here, and uh, also set up some um, boilerplate like eye diagrams and things and things of that nature, uh, and generate this all automatically for you. So I've done that here, and we can see after running with the uh, uniform temperature, we get this eye diagram. So for those of you who are a little bit unfamiliar with eye diagrams, what they show is um, one unit interval uh, over, overlapping uh, the transitions from one interview, uh, kind of um, window to one unit interval throughout an entire digital signal overlapping. So. What this lets you do is see if any of your transitions or on signals go lower than a certain voltage or higher than a certain voltage. Manufacturers for different digital components and um, uh, organizations in charge of maintaining a specification a digital, for a digital standard such as like DDR or um, uh, PCIe have these masks that uh, function as a region where no, uh, you shouldn't have any voltages crossing if you want the uh, channel to be performing properly. So me simulating this here, I might think that everything is fine with my design, but I'm not taking temperature into account, which is the crux of our uh, uh, presentation today. So let's go back and let's include some temperature effects. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is do a DC simulation in order to do a uh, CFD thermal simulation, which I'll then use for the SYZ simulation. So first things first, we're just going to do this DC simulation, and I'll show you how I set that up. OK, to set it up, uh, we'll just hit compute, or uh, we'll go to the wizard and do configure DC IR drop analysis. And this, what, what this lets you do is select nets, your power planes, right? Once you have selected those, you can uh, see all of the integrated circuits which are connected to those power planes, and then uh, attach a sync, a current sync, to each of the uh, pins that are on the power planes here. So for example, I have U0 right here. This is one of these um, DRAM chips on this DDR stick, or on this RAM stick. And um, I've attached a current sync here uh, between the pins which are connected to the positive power net, VDD, and the ground, which is VSS. And I've also um, made a, a power supply on the J1 pin. So what this does is in the DC solve, is it'll attach all of these components in the appropriate place for you in the, uh, uh, on the geometry here. So again, we have the voltage source on the connector, which is supplying, supplying all the power. And then we have a bunch of current sinks, which represent the current draw of all of our integrated circuits. So you would, if you were going through with your simulation, you'd hit configure, validate, and then simulate. And then after a little while, your DCIR simulation would be done. So the DCIR simulation allows us to see the currents and voltages on the board here. So what you can do is you can filter through these results and look at the current density on either of the, any of the layers. Um, for example, I can just look at everything on the top. I can just look at J on the top, and this shows us current density uh, per meter squared. This is this is a 3D simulation, or it's 3D aware, of course. So this is given in amps per meter squared. You can find voltage on the different uh, pins on your planes to see if there's any voltage drop and you can see the power dissipated as well. This dissipated power density is what will be used for the uh, ice pack simulation. So we've configured our DC simulation just fine. And now we'll run the ice pack simulation. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is just, um, so first I'm gonna do a uh, set up the ice pack simulation. So to do so, we'll go to simulation ice pack. And we will point to this DCIR sim. So the way you'll do that is just use this drop down one amp per chip here. Uh, choose your different ice pack simulation properties, and then just hit launch. After that's completed, you can see a temperature distribution here. So we see like uh, the chips are heating up our board. Okay, um, from that point, what we can do is use this temperature distribution for uh, another SYZ simulation. And we bring that over in the same way. And we see that uh, now, since everything is heated up, uh, the copper has become more resistive, and we see a more lossy simulation with a closed eye. Now, as a designer, I wonder what I could do to mitigate this. And the answer would be to add uh, a fan. It's a very simple thing we could do without updating the board geometry to uh, fix this. So in order to do that, we'll go back to ice pack again, and run a new ice pack simulation. But this time in the thermal environment, we'll add this force convection option. 
by default. And what we did in the first simulation is just natural convection. So it's still simulating the air moving, but it's just moving due to uh, the uh, air becoming hot and rising. In this new simulation, what we'll do is just uh, force convection, where we're actually pushing air through. So of course, when we push air through, that's going to help more heat leave the uh, design. And we should see things cool off. So after using the same DC uh, power dissipation um, and this new um, force convection, we'll launch the simulation. And then after a while, we'll see um, these results. So as we can see, the majority of things uh, are a lot cooler on this board. Um, since the convection is happening in the positive x direction, we also see this um, gradient along the x direction, where uh, heat, which was um, sunk off of the left side of the board, where it gets deposited back on the right side. So this is a physical. But overall, the average temperature of the board is much cooler. So taking this new temperature distribution into account, we can run um, another SYZ simulation taking into account uh, the temperature distribution just in the same way that we did for the first one, um, which I don't think I showed, so I'll do that quickly. So you go back to the same temperature tab where we set the uniform temperature, and instead we would point to our, um, uh, with DCIR, forced or natural convection in either case, just hit OK and then simulate to get our uh, S parameters. Okay, so now with this overall cooler board, um, what we can do is look at our simulation once more, and we see a nice healthy eye there. So what happened was things cooled off, um, the copper got less um, resistive because it was cooler, and since there was less resistance, there was less voltage drop, and we see a bigger eye here. In addition to the uh, um, temperature, distri temperature distributions we get from the ice pack sims, we can also um, open the project in ice pack to investigate how the um, air is moving as a little bonus. So one does that just by right-clicking on the relevant simulation and hitting uh, Open Project in Ice Pack. So here we have our natural convection simulation set up in ADT. So this kind of gives you an idea also of what's happening behind the scenes as well. So we have our um, geometry. What we can do is plot the actual velocity of the air here. Alrighty. And this is what I would expect from a natural convection simulation. We have this hot object here. The air is getting heated up. The air, hot air rises. And so we see a uh, air current above the board going upwards. So similarly, we could do the same thing for force convection. And I'll show you that really quick. Alrighty. So again, this is going to correspond to our second scenario in which we're forcing um, air to run over the design. So that is about it for our simulation workflow here. All I could say is uh, try it out and see how you can improve your design and its thermal performance.